His Highness, my dear, dear friends from Israel, Arel Tubi, the general manager of the President House, David Leffler, David, are you in the crowd? The general manager of the economy, Yael Ravia Tzadok from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and of course, Gadi Arieli, the CEO of the Israeli Expert Institute, and my dear, dear friend who went crazy with my vision, Dov Kotler, the CEO of Banca Poalim. Her Excellency, I decided to leave all my writings aside because you know what I've been doing the last five minutes? All I've been doing is I've been pinching myself. And I'm pinching myself saying, Adiv, wake up, wake up, you're dreaming. It's a dream. Can it be that in 2020, we're sitting here all together at the largest tech conference in the world? in 2020, and we are here together. And we are here together because for our generation, our leaders have decided to set aside the history. We have to deal with the future. And you know what? We were cut in 2020 unprepared with COVID-19. It cut all of us unprepared. But at the end of the day, we have learned, and COVID-19 has taught all of us that we are equal. It does not differentiate between genders, color, religions, locations. No, no. In order for us to deal with it, we have to unite. We have to unite our knowledge, our forces, our experience, to deal with those uncertainties. And yes, as we always say as entrepreneurs, the challenges are those who will make us even better, who will put us together to create a better future for the next generation. And we have an opportunity, an opportunity that is so unique to our generation that we shouldn't miss it. It's an opportunity that our next generation, our children, will not ask the question, where is Dubai? And your children will not ask the question, what is Israel all about? No. We are all Abram kids, and you know what? We're siblings. And before I came on stage, it's the first time in the history that I'm speaking, that my stomach was turning. It was turning due to the opportunity, to the excitement that we are all here together. And as the normalization and putting the peace contract in place, it did one major thing to all of us. Yes, we had some commerce and trading and we did some work together, but it was always done through third parties setting up foreign companies, we will never be able to walk on the streets and to be proud Israelis to be here in Dubai. And now with the normalization in place, we can see it like we did this morning. Have the small talk to get to know each other. God gave us two ears and one mouth to listen more, to feel, to sense each other and to build and to take forward our vision together as a unified group of leaders. And what we also found out that we have more commonalities than differences. And one of the major commonalities that we have found out that our family DNA are so similar. The most important aspect that we all deal with is the education of our kids, of the next generation. We'll do whatever is necessary whether we have the funding or not, the family will always invest in the next generation, the children, to educate them. And in Israel, unfortunately, we had no natural resources. Until lately, we found some gas, but that's only lately. So the state of Israel have realized that the only capital that we have is our human capital and had invested throughout the years 
in developing and building the human capital. And when we sit and talk, we realize we have the same vision. Realizing the post-petroleum strategy, you're investing in the human capital to create the entrepreneurial environment, an environment that will have the vision to think of future, the future Dubai leadership is always to deal with the future. Our belated president, Shimon Perez, who was one of my mentors, he used to say a phrase that I cannot forget. He always said, Adiv, the past, we can learn from it, we cannot change it. The current timing, every second is becoming a past. All we have to do is to deal with the future, think of the future, and don't dare to dream small. Don't even dare to be there. Dream big, and if you believe in it, you will make the difference. And as we go through the technology, and one of the leaders of the technology, you know, we don't get excited from technology. When we do our investments, our main screening is not the technology. The technology is an enabler. We invest in people. That's the main source. Most of our screening procedures, methodologies, and policies is to invest in people. And when we sit here and when we talk, feeling each other, we think alike. We definitely think alike. And we're going to unite our forces to make the difference because we are all facing the global competition. As COVID-19 has created some challenges and the global trading has been shrunk roughly by 10%. That means that in order for us to compete in the global competition, we have to continue to innovate. And to continue to innovate, we have to share ideas and thoughts, but we have to move to the next stage. It's not only about knowledge sharing, and it's not only about knowledge transfer. I think our generation has to take the leadership of co-creation. And that's what I'd like to see. And I must say, I really want to salute a very dear, dear friend of mine who became like a brother, His Excellency Hilal, who took the leadership to create the conference in 2020 to take the risk to have an offline event at such a magnitude. And as busy as he was, I kept bugging him. Day and night, his, his responsiveness, every second was unbelievable. So I really, I cannot express my admiration and my respect to all of his team, to all of the hospitality that we have received. And of course, the team of the Israeli Expert Institute, who worked with the Banka Poalim team, who worked days and night to make sure that we have such a magnitude event. We started out by saying we'll have 100 entrepreneurs. Officially, due to COVID, we limited it to 200 entrepreneurs. But as you can see, the delegation that arrived from Israel to respect the opportunity, to respect the UAE, to respect the opportunity of our generation to change the whole environment. There are over a thousand Israelis who have arrived for this opportunity. I thank you all. And another difference that we create in Israel, the three major economic organizations the Industry Association, which Dr. Ron Tomer is here. The Israeli Chamber of Commerce, of course, with the Israeli Expert Institute. We have united forces because in order to be able to work together, it's not that you have another delegation coming in, another one will disturb you. We have to unite our vision and work together in order to be able to successful if we really want to take it as a serious marathon run. I know that we have to go through many steps. We have to take the baby steps. And as Israelis, we are just like the Ferraris, zero to 103 seconds. We have to think differently. We have to start with showing our respect to what you have done, 
to your vision, to your culture. We hope to receive the same respect to our culture. And at the same time, we will not skip the process that we have to go through due to the history that we were not involved. But we have to build a trust between us. And we have to take those baby steps. And we have to help each other, to educate each other, to be successful in making those baby steps fruitful. So again, I want to thank all of you for being here. And every single one of you is now a part of the most important historical moment of our countries. Because when we say peace agreement, it's really it's about economy. It's not about anything else. We were never in a war. We were not those tough people. And the economy and the economic diplomacy led by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for the last 20 years, they've been in the region, they've worked hard to make sure that slowly but surely those steps will fulfill synchronized with the Ministry of Economy and our government, they showed us the path. They showed us there is the campus, but we have to pave the roads and we have to make sure that those economic relationships that we build are sustainable, are meaningful, are truthful, will be successful if we believe in those guidelines. So thank you very much. I spoke from my heart. I left everything written aside, and I hope that you will feel how meaningful and how excited I am to be here. Thank you very much.